In the previous videos, we have been working on designing the admin sidebar and we have succeeded in making it mobile responsive. So that was the left side of the admin page. Now we are moving over to working on the right side of the admin page, which is the page content. Now we want to make this page content responsive, or rather we want to make the content of this page content responsive. So if you look at the finished project, you're going to see that the page content houses are tables and forms and other tables and all of them have uh, varying sizes. So we need to make all of these responsive. And um, since there are many uh, containers and uh, tables and forms and so on, it might not be a good idea to go and designing individual elements and making them responsive at an individual level. So uh, what the trick I'm going to use is I'm going to have a bunch of containers ranging from small size for tables like this to large size for tables like this and then medium size uh, for a form that is not neither small nor big or nor large. So we will just wrap these elements around those boxes or around those divs and then we make those boxes responsive. So for tables that have the same size, instead of styling those tables individually or those forms individually, we will just wrap them around that one box and then we make that box responsive. So the table now or the form is going to derive its size or its width from the form in which it is wrapped. So that way we are going to have only about three uh, forms or three uh, containers that will wrap all the elements on our page content. So in so doing, we are not going to have too many um, uh, CSS uh, defined for all the elements in our page content. But before we go ahead and define those boxes, there is one uh, container I want to wrap every single element within the page content in that container so the container is going is not going to do anything we are basically just giving it a maximum width so we want that no matter how wide the screen is the width of the page content should never exceed a certain maximum width we are doing this because um, when users visit our website using very large monitors uh, it is going to look very, very bad if we don't have a maximum width. For example, can you imagine this form stretching out to about four or five times its natural uh, natural width without uh, increasing the size of the font and so on? It's just going to look terrible. So we will create a container uh, component or a container div to wrap everything, including those boxes that we are going to be wrapping the elements around okay so this is going to make more sense as we implement so let us go to our code and we are beginning with the dashboard since that is the first admin page we have so this is the sidebar it ends here and now we have the page content which is the entire uh, space from here uh, all around Okay, so the container, the admin container is going to have a maximum width, width of around 1000. And that container is going to be a descendant of page content. So we'll give it, a, we'll give that, we'll call that container an admin container. And then everything else on the page is going to be within that container. Okay, so that is it for the container. Now let us go to our CSS and define the maximum width for this container. So I'm going to scroll down to the very end and then I'll define a section called uh, responsive boxes or containers. Okay, so for the admin container, we will give it a max width of uh, let's say 1000. And then it's not going to have any margin so let's just say margin zero pixels and then auto the auto is important because if we give it a max width we expect it to be centralized 
otherwise you this one there will not be any margin around here and the table will start here and there will be so much space here so auto centralizes it uh, horizontally okay now let's take another look at the finished project so this this is the um the content of this page contents this particular page content is really big so the con the container that should wrap this should have a class of uh, maybe large box or something like that if you go to the other or uh, to the add post form you will see that the form is neither large nor small so we can wrap it around a, a div called a uh, medium box and if you visit the rules or the permissions page or something like that you will see that the table is small so we'll wrap it around a small box class or something like that so we have three sizes we have small box we have large box and we have medium box so let me define the styles for that right now so we have small box we have large box and we have a let me just put medium box between medium box all right so the small box is going to have a width of about 50% the um the medium box is going to have a width of about 75% and the large box is going to have a width of about let's say 95 percent okay and by the way this is not inside any media query so we are defining these styles like this uh according to it, to the way we want them to look on a desktop device so a width of 75 50 and 95 uh, percent is the way we want them to look on our desktop device which is how we see them now so this is a width of about 75%. So this is the medium box. And then the post uh, tables is actually the large box, which occupies about 95%. So for each of these, we are going to have a bit of a padding. For example, uh, if you take a look at the add post form, there is some space at the top of the box. So let us add paddings. I'm just going to use a shortcut padding will give a padding at the top of 32 pixels that is top and bottom and then left and right a padding of 10 pixels okay and now let us begin work on the responsiveness and uh, I want us to begin with the responsiveness of the small box now if we take a look at the small box on desktop it has a width of about 500 pixels and if you continue to reduce let's see if you begin from the desktop size and you continue to reduce the width will never go uh, below 500 or rather above 500 so it will remain fixed at 500 pixels which is still a responsive width even when you scroll down down it remains at 500 pixels and when you go below 500 pixels it starts responding in relation to the it start assuming the width of the page itself so what we are going to do is to make the responsiveness more natural instead of assigning a width we will assign a max width and we'll give that max width a value of 500 pixels so the size of this will never go beyond 500 pixels and now when we have given it a, a max width we can now give it a width of 100 percent and when we do this we are going to make sure that when it arrives at a width that is uh, less than 500 pixels it is going to not have a fixed width but it's going to just respond to the width of the page like it's going to assume 100 percent of the width of its container and which is why it's going to make it responsive as we see right now so if you refresh okay so this is 500 if we scroll down below the 500 mark the max width will still be 500 because it doesn't expand beyond 500 and now since you have given it a width of 100 percent 
it is just going to assume the width of the page all right so the responsiveness um yeah i didn't need to really refresh we don't yet have it we don't yet have it here um so now we are basically just working blindly so in the next episodes when we start adding the uh, divs themselves you're going to see it better but i hope that using this to demonstrate uh, actually helps so yeah that's it for the responsiveness of this small box so we can then define or uh, we can then make the other two boxes responsive and to do that we are going to copy a media query and for this case we will use the uh, 10 the 1024 pixels uh, breakpoint so let's copy that and we paste it just under the boxes we defined so for these two boxes when they arrive at this media query we want them to assume the same width so at this point they should be the same basically so we will just select the two of them separated by comma and then we'll give them a width of let's say 96 percent because we want to um, allow some space to have a margin and a padding around them we want to allow some space for margin and padding something like that so that's basically it so this is the style that is going to make all the forms that we have all the forms and table in our admin section to be responsive so this is a really concise way for us to make our uh, the entire page content responsive all right so in the next video we are going to begin adding those pages and then applying these classes and seeing them work on making uh, making our pages responsive